Bills show. hosted the Patriots in this season opener. First play of the second quarter is where we pick it up. Patriots with third and goal from the three. Ramondre Stevenson taking the handoff, running it in for the touchdown. And the Patriots leave 7-0. Five minutes to play in the half. Bengals second and 11 for the 15. Burrow throwing it to the corner of the end zone for Mike Gesicki. After further review, the ball comes loose, though, and the touchdown is overturned. The very next play, third and 11. Burrow, the short pass to Tanner Hudson. He fumbles at the goal line. It's recovered by Marcus Jones. Mistakes across the board. This is a ball play. Hustle by Kyle Duggar. Ball awareness. And Marcus Jones, Johnny on the spot. The dude does play 18 positions. Seven minutes to play. Bengals trailing 16 to 7. Burrow sacked by Keon White. White had two and a half sacks on the day. Let's Patriots pull off the upset. And let's hear from Burrow after this game. Yeah, we had our opportunities. Didn't take advantage of them. Uh, yeah, not our, not our best day. So we'll come back, learn from it, come back next week. They're taking it away. They did a good job. They had a good plan. Uh, so I was just taking underneath, taking what they gave me. You know, we'll watch the tape and see if we had some other opportunities to get the ball down the field and, and figure that out. Jamar Chase was the only Bengals pass catcher who showed up on Sunday. He caught all six of his targets, half of which went for first downs. Reminder, he still doesn't have a deal. All the other Bengals pass catchers caught 15 of their 23 targets and averaged just over four yards per attempt. Tanner Hudson also fumbled at the two-yard line for a turnover, as we just showed you there. Dan, how much of this performance was actually on Joe Burrow? Yeah, some. Okay, Joe, I don't think Joe played well. I don't think he felt the pocket well. I don't think he saw coverage well. I'm going to say the same stuff about the Bengals offense that I've said for the last year. I'm shocked that there was nothing different about this offense. It's efficient, and that's it. That's the only thing they are. And when I hear Joe go, well, I took what they gave me underneath, that's all teams give them is underneath. And the Bengals, I expected different. I expected something to give me something more than catch and throw football. They don't have tight ends that can block in the run game. The timing of their offense is not good. They play spread out shotgun football and they think that they're going to drive down the field 15 plays at four yards a catch. I thought I was going to get something different out of this offense. I know it's one game, but it's I'm so freaking frustrated watching this offense play football when all they do is line up in the shotgun and throw four yard routes. Sorry. Well, Dan Pitcher takes over this offense, and he has to realize that just because the coverage dictates you shouldn't throw it, sometimes you got to throw it. Scheme it. Right? When yep. you have a guy like a Jamar Chase, and even though Christian Gonzalez is a ball guy, he's very athletic, give him a chance down the field. The first ball thrown over 10 yards to Jamar Chase wasn't until the fourth quarter with 425 left on the clock. You can't be that sort of team. And you want to know where some of the explosiveness of this offense is? Go watch the Houston Texans. It was Joe Mixon with 30 carries over a buck 25. This team doesn't have the playmakers that it used to have. You lose Tyler Boyd in the slot. You're throwing the ball to Yoshi Boss and Irwin, right? Just Gusecki is dropping the football in the end zone. Mm. This team has to get creative. This team has to use motion. They have to use different for, uh, formations, tips, and tendencies to try to throw people off. Just allowing Joe to sit back there and take the right play isn't going to work because they're going to give you the underneath stuff and make you drive the ball. Uh, Dan, go ahead. This offense looked like the one they called when Joe had the hurt calf. Legit. I mean, we killed Atlanta wow. yeah. yesterday for doing pistol and shotgun the whole time. Right. And nope, that's exactly what Cincinnati did. It's I, I like I like Zach Taylor. I, I've, I know Zach. The, the scheme has to change. It's who they've been, though, right, Dan? I mean, the difference is when you do what you're describing, which is, hey, Joe, be Peyton Manning, sit back there in the gun, read things out, get the ball out efficiently. Yes, when you have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins on the field, it works. But when you take out one piece of that equation, it just gets really tight. You mentioned Houston yep. having no mix in. The other thing Houston has is under center play action, cut splits, all the things we talk about that lead to explosive plays that aren't just reliant on two players, the quarterback and the wide receiver. It feels like something has to change with this Bengals offense because th they'll be able to beat bad defenses easily. Yeah. But good defenses, and the New England Patriots are a good defense, good. they can play that type of offense. Well, they they, they had their opportunities, y'all, but you know where I'm going, MK. And you brought it up last week on NFL Live. I don't give a damn how good your quarterback playing. You can't stop the run. You're nope. probably going to lose. And when I watch this defense, Lou Anarumo obviously was grasping at straws. 
He was trying to bring edge pressure. You ended up with Dax Hill with a one-on-one. Don't make miss the tackle. Give up an explosive run. Same situation. Now, RC, you know this. You played for one of the best defenses ever in the NFL. When your defense coordinator store commits nine people yeah. to the box and you cannot get it stopped, you have more than just a player problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, so I'm looking at the game, and obviously I didn't think Joe played great either. I thought he was very methodical and and it, it was just boring from an offensive standpoint. But defensively, when you start adding safeties up around seven and eight yards around the line of scrimmage, because we know what you're about to do and we still give up 13, 14 explosives, I, you can't win well, like well, that. Well, the other piece of it is, too, somebody has to go become a tooth chipper. Somebody has to realize, okay, we have to make a play. We have to displace this line of scrimmage. If I'm Dax Hill, who's a former safety yep. out of Michigan, make the tackle. Yeah. What they're doing offensively is we're going to block down with these double tight ends. We're going to leave you one-on-one. -on -one, make a play and crack replace. And they just couldn't do that. Also, when you look at what they were doing defensively, they just got mesh routed yes. to death. Yeah. Right? They just threw the ball over the head of the center and allowed them to get catch and run. There were no adjustments made offensively or defensively. This team has to realize that it's no longer 2021. You have to get out of what you thought made you good and learn something or do something differently to make yourself good in the present. Dan. There's nothing physical about the Bengals on offense or defense. It's all finesse. Let's go to the Steelers and Falcons. Russell Wilson out of the game with a calf injury, so he doesn't start. Justin Fields gets the start. Kirk Cousins making his debut in Atlanta for the Falcons. Late first quarter tied 3-3. Cousins pass intended for Drake London, but picked off by Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Elliott with a great play here. Kirk Cousins just seems out of sorts the entire game. Let's go to the second quarter. The Steelers trying to get points before the half. And Fields goes deep to George Pickens for the 41-yard game. Do you know the audacity you have to have as Arthur Smith to call this play and the arm Woo. strength by Justin Fields? Hey, George Pickens pretty good, too. Falcons leading 10-9 to here, first and 10 on the pit, 32. The snap hits Ross Dwelly as he goes in motion, and T.J. Watt was just wreaking havoc this It's game. only right. Every time my man made a play, they threw a stinking flag. <laughs> About time he gets the turnover. Fourth quarter, under three minutes to go in the game. The Falcons down five. Cousins pass toward Ray Ray McLeod. The third is picked off by Dante Jackson. The Steelers will go on to win 18 to 10. The Falcons had three turnovers over the day. And Mina, it was our first chance to see this Falcons offense with Kirk Cousins. What, what stood out to you? You know, when the Falcons signed Kirk Cousins, I'm thinking of Kirk in Minnesota. I'm thinking their offensive play caller, Zach Robinson, comes from the Rams. He's going to be under center. We're going to see a lot of play action. No pass attempts under center. Not a single rep of play action. Mm. Uh, he was entirely in the gun or the pistol. And when he was in the gun or the pistol, they were extremely predictable. As you can see here, 100% pass rate out wow. of the gun, almost entirely running the football uh, out of pistol, which made it a lot easier for the Pittsburgh Steelers front to anticipate what they were doing. They were also, by the way, predi predictable out of their personnel groupings. When they were 11, they were passing it 80% of the time. So I'm watching this thinking, is this because Kirk Cousins is hurt and he just can't move back there? And he doesn't want to turn his back to the defense at all. And if that's the case, is it wise to have him out there, Ryan? Well, Sorry, really fast. We look like we're at the kids' table at Thanksgiving. Well, one, I'm at the kids' table. I'm at the kids' table and my eyes watering. I'm in, I'm in bad shape right now, guys. I, I don't know what made Eisman put us out here. I thought it was just the Falcons' in offense the, in that the had you but when you I just at, wanted to see my action. Like, when you look at what we saw from Kirk Cousins in that offense, it made me say to myself, oh, I see why you drafted Michael Pinnock <laughs> ah. eighth overall. What did you know? Because... This is not how he's successful. No. It also brought to light that these guys don't create a ton of separation. We watch Kirk Cousins in the play action. Kirk Cousins having opportunity for half rolls, and he had one of the best route runners in football in Justin Jefferson to throw the football to. He's not going to have that in Atlanta. So if they can't get under center, if Kirk Cousins can't move the launch point in the backfield, yeah. this is going to be very difficult for them the entire year. On the Steelers side of things, they weren't able to start Russell Wilson, Dan. They go with Justin Fields. What did his tape tell you in the early goings? That he should be their starter and that his connection with George Pickens to Ooh. be like the ability to throw downfield in an explosive manner matters. Um, I, I know that this offense yeah. is going to lack some efficiency and Justin's going to have to <laughs> and if he's going to be their starting quarterback, he's him and Arthur Smith are going to have to find ways to be more efficient. But I do know this. He managed the game. He made plays with his legs when he needed to. 
and then he made big throws downfield. They're going to have to get him to understand to play a little quicker, but I also don't think they should ask him to play in that manner if he's going to be their starting quarterback. <laughs> Dan, what What's are you up? Doing? I love your pin, bro. It's so, I love it. Is that you. custom? O R C. That's custom. Yeah. I like how he looped the O in there. I, with obviously, the D, like obviously, you let your daughter draw it. I think that is beautiful, and that's what it's about. This is about family and being together. Hey, I'm not gonna make a comment though because this is the same. difference in. Oh, I was gonna say, Dan, this is the difference in your fashion versus our seats fashion. Like that's. It's about right. Um, all right. Let, we're going to see how long we last at this kid's table. We're going to get kicked out of the Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner the way we're behaving over here.